trying to find your happiness this winter? Let Fiji Airways fly you there direct. Whether you're sunbathing or snorkeling, dining or dreaming, you'll experience legendary Fijian hospitality. Expect the warmest of welcomes in this Pacific paradise. Unplug, unwind, and relax in your happy place. Fiji. Get great deals on direct flights to happiness at FijiAirways.com. That's FijiAirways.com. You deserve this. Go from here to happiness. Flying direct with Fiji Airways. Need a winter holiday escape? Forget your cares in Fiji. White sand beaches and scuba diving are calling. Your tropical paradise getaway is just one nonstop Fiji Airways flight away. With round trip fares starting at $899 from LAX or SFO. Or check out great fares to Australia and New Zealand with seamless connections via Fiji. Book now at FijiAirways.com. From here to happiness. Flying direct with Fiji Airways. Hi, this is Crystal Hardison from Southeastern Livingston Center. I'm the director, and you are listening to Local Leaders, the podcast. Welcome to the show, Warren. Thank you. It's great to be here. So uh, for the people that don't know you, just just tell us who you are and, and what your business is. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Warren Sager, and I am a business coach and serial entrepreneur. I love serial entrepreneur. <laughs> I don't hear that one too much, but you know, I might be a serial entrepreneur somewhere along the line. I think you maybe are. You just don't realize it. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's what we're here today for. We're going to realize a lot of things about business that maybe we didn't realize through your eyes. And you have a lot of experience in business and we're going to get to all that. But I want to talk a little bit about you and your family. You have an interesting story about where you, where you were raised, uh, in particular on a farm. So I want to kind of talk about that a little bit. So take me back to those times. So thank you. Yeah, I do have an interesting story. <laughs> uh, I was born in New York City. Uh, mm -hmm. I lived there till I was eight years old. And my dad is a city boy. My mom was a city girl. We were city people. And But my dad had a dream. He had a dream that he didn't want to live in the city. He wanted to toil in the dirt and and be more with nature and spend more time with his family yeah. so he sold our house our little station wagon we bought a farm and a pickup truck and moved to upstate new york and we became farmers so were you excited about that i was not excited <laughs> about that uh, i liked my little city suburbia life yeah. and all of a sudden instead of you know little league and summer camp i was you know taking care of the chickens and uh, hoeing weeds out, out of the field so waking up early and yeah, working hard right yeah really really hard yeah uh i've had a few people on the show that have have kind of started out in life farming and and uh so i have i know a little bit about it and it's a, it's you know it definitely develops a work ethic early right i actually don't think i've ever worked as hard as i worked when i was on the farm and yeah. to this day no work ever seems really hard because of you know where i came from and what i what i've done funny the lessons we learn when we're little and we don't even realize we're <laughs> learning them especially when it comes to hard work so you you're out on that farm and and i guess eventually you got away from that tell me about that so we were also doing some interesting farming so mm -hmm. we were what's called upland farming we were growing vegetables mm -hmm. and then the way we sold our vegetables because of the fact that we were from the city is we would load this stuff up in the truck and drive it to the city, New York City in mm -hmm. Manhattan, we would set up tables on the street corner and hawk produce from the street corner. Okay. Uh, my dad was an amazing hawker. And, you know, you thought, just like at the ball game, you know, pretzels, get your pretzels yeah. here. And, and he did all that with, <laughs> with produce, you know, corn five for a dollar, come get it, tomatoes, yeah. you know. Anyway, uh, farming was really hard and it was very stressful. It was very stressful on my dad. And even though he moved the family to be on the farm to, to work together, we, we had that experience, but it also was really tough on him. And he developed uh, some really bad health health issues from farming and the stress. Yeah. And so eventually when, uh, about the time I was graduating high school and I turned 18, uh, after my dad's like third heart attack, the doctor said, you, you just can't do this anymore. And they, my dad came to me and said, you know, son is the oldest son. He gave me that little speech, you know, do you, would you like the farm or, or not? Yeah. And of course for me, it was a really easy decision. And he already knew that that wasn't the life that I wanted for myself. 
And so they sold the farm and, and moved uh, and wow. came down south, which is how I wound up in, in the, this part of the world myself. Yeah. And stress, you know, stress is a bad thing, I mean, you know, when it comes to your health. And a lot of people don't realize that, but stress will kill you, right? It's it's uh, it's something that uh, a little bit of stress might can even keep you sharp. But a lot of stress is something that you really want to take care of. And I tell people that a lot. Uh, business owners are famous for stress, right? It's, it's, uh, it's not the easiest, uh, thing in the world to do to, to own a business. So, um, so it's interesting you bring up that that stress. Yeah. It, it's the mantra, or I created a mantra from that, that I live by today that hopefully we'll get to talk about a little bit more, which is I, I so believe in working smarter, not harder Yeah, because you, you want to have a more of a balance and you want to reduce that stress as much as possible and, and figure out ways to mitigate it. So Absolutely. It, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and you like to scuba dive. You had mentioned in your little questionnaire. I, I am a scuba diver. Yeah. Uh, love doing that. And luckily, we're close to the Gulf of Mexico and some beautiful water out there, especially further south. And uh, it, it's a great sport. I got my kids to, to do scuba diving as well. So it's a great family activity. You know, it's interesting. I have a lot of friends that scuba dive. I've never been certified in scuba diving. They've always kind of tried to talk me into it. And I'm not against it. Just never have done it as of yet but it seems like everybody that scuba dives almost gets addicted to it it's uh must be fun it's a whole different world down there and yeah. most people don't get to see it uh, one of the things also that i've done that i'm really excited about is i've also gone skydiving so mm -hmm. uh so when i think about it how many people on this planet have been at fourteen thousand feet above of the earth mm -hmm. and been able to look down and then those same people have been 150 feet you know under the water yeah so to go from negative 150 to 14,000 feet there probably aren't many people that have done that probably so it's, not. I, always weird that i think about those you know every now and then something like what makes me really special that's one thing that makes me special <laughs> yeah you've you've definitely seen both sides of that right from the ground to the sky it's uh and underneath the ground a little bit so uh, never sky, sky dove either. And I yeah, I don't know if I'd recommend doing that. It's a great thing to say that I did it off my bucket list, but yeah. uh, jumping out of a perfectly good airplane is a crazy thing to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, it, it, I would imagine it's a rush though for you. Uh, absolutely, like, wow. absolutely. And I've got the video that luckily that I, I paid extra for the video, so I have sure. it for posterity. And it's just always great to to have that and re remember those times. How long has it been since you did that? Was it's, it recent? No, it's been probably four or five years. Okay. Now. Did, did you it. do it here in Louisiana? Or? There, there is no place locally in Louisiana. I went gotcha. to Mississippi uh, gotcha. for the day. Uh, I'm in this great group called EO Entrepreneurs uh -huh. Organization, a group of uh, peer to peer entrepreneurs that work with each other to help grow and develop into stronger leaders and entrepreneurs. And that was one of the activities we did as a group who wanted to go skydiving. And I was the first one to raise my hand. Interesting. Interesting. And, they, and we're going to talk a little bit about EO and just a little while, because I did, I did see that on your questionnaire and wanted to ask you about it. I was not familiar with it. So it seems like a great organization that we'll kind of get into in a little while. Okay. So you ended up uh, coming to this, this area of the world about 18 years old, you said, or was there a stint before that? Well, no. Uh, yeah, there was a stint before okay. that. So my family moved down South. I stayed up in New York and went to college up in New York because that's yeah. where, you know, the world that I knew Sure. and graduated from college, started working out in the professional world. I went uh, to work for Walmart, actually, right out of school as a manager. Yeah, I so all my friends went to New York City. Again, that's the world I lived in. They all went to New York City to work on Wall Street or one of the big accounting firms, and I I went completely the opposite direction. I went out to Springfield, Illinois, to manage a Sam's Club. Wow! And what a great experience, though, because where my friends were toiling at the lowest levels and just working their craft, trying to figure out life and, and working sure. hard. I was managing people and business and, and customer service and just really learning the tools of, of running a business from the number one business in the world. I mean, Walmart's definitely on that top of that list. There's no doubt about it. I mean, they have, uh, you know, they, when you think about businesses uh, that have really stood the test of time and took a, took a bit, big advantage of, uh, of just about every uh facet of, of scaling business, Walmart would be some someone that pops in my head immediately. You know, Amazon and Walmart are probably in my mind two that have, have uh, really dominated scaling and 
and all those sorts of things with business. Um, right. So I learned so much from them and how to run a business and, and made a lot of mistakes, but luckily did it, you know, under their umbrella and, and, you know, grew as a leader. Sure. And then it became real clear to me after about five years that I wasn't cut out for the corporate world like that, that I was an entrepreneur and that it was time for me to take what I've learned and my experiences and start my own business. Now- BJ Pawn and Gun in Denham Springs wants to buy your unwanted gold jewelry, gold coins, and gold bullion. With 30 years of experience operating in the Livingston Parish area, BJ Pawn wants to be your source when selling your gold. So stop by BJ Pawn today for a no obligation offer. BJ Pawn, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Now, this is interesting, so I don't want to gloss over that because that's an important thing that um, that people need to hear. And that is, you know, what I would when I pictured, I, th- I think of you sitting there and you're working for a, a company that probably has a lot of stability to it. Right. I mean, Walmart's stable. Uh, Sam's Club is stable. They You don't have to worry about them going out of business. I mean, that wasn't a concern of yours back then, I'm sure. All of that being said, you, like you just said, you have an entrepreneurial spirit. So at some point you had to be sitting there going, who I'm about to kind of jump here and, and go out on my own, even though I have this, um, this stability where I'm at. Tell me about it, that. Well, first of all, for me, it was not a very hard decision. It was eating at me inside that, that there were things that I was responsible for that I didn't help create, mm-hmm. or maybe I thought, you know, kind of made sense, but didn't make sense. And, but that's the directive from the corporate office or, or one of your manager bosses and, sure. and, or things were being discussed that I wasn't a part of. And that's just not the world that I wanted to have. I, I wanted to be part of, of everything that was happening. And Absolutely. I wasn't able to do that. Now I was very fortunate because again, I was, I was still young, but I was a career minded person. So I hadn't yet been married and didn't have kids. So making that that risky jump, like you called it, was not as risky for me because it was just me, myself, and I, and and I just knew this is what my next step needed to be. And that's a great point. And I've had a few people on this show, and a couple of them did kind of make their decisions earlier in life, before they had kids, before they were married, and it was just them. And, hey, if I fall, it's just me. You know, a lot of, uh, as you wait in life to come to, say, that decision, the issue becomes you know, health insurance, the issue becomes, uh, uh, money, the issue becomes your children and your wife are relying on you or, or if you're the female, my husband's relying on me, whatever. But, uh, so let me speak to that for a second. So, um, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but my second company, um, it was founded out of my living room as a part-time thing on the side. Mm -hmm. And I was actually working for another company at the time And my wife made it real clear because then we did have a house and two kids. And my wife said, until you can replace 75% of the money that you were bringing in, Mm -hmm. you can't make the jump and give it all up to, to, you know, start this new business and go all in with it. So so that's what I had to do. And it was like having two full-time jobs for a long, long period of time. But that was the safer play to to get to the other side. And and absolutely. But by the way, once I did make the jump, it's amazing when you put your 100% focus into something, how quickly the business started growing even faster and scaling. Agreed 100%. Because when you are kind of balancing both, uh, you know, there's only there's a limit to what you can do. You know, at some point, you just cannot say scale it anymore. Uh, because your focus is not 100% on it. I mean, you're splitting time, essentially, is what you're doing, right, between two jobs. Absolutely, and focus is one of the keys to success. you really got to focus your energies, and you could accomplish so much more if you have that focus. Yeah, I agree 100%. I tell people, I've said this more than once on this show, and that is you can become a victim of your own success if you're working for somebody else in that uh, if you're successful and if you're doing well, making a lot of money, um, you know, it's, it's hard, it gets harder and harder to kind of take that leap to business ownership because you got to replace that income. Just like your wife said, Hey, you can do this, but, 
look, don't don't get crazy. Exactly. <laughs> you, exactly. you need to have about seventy five percent coming in, and and kudos to her. I mean, that's the smart play, right? That's uh, oh yeah, it was frustrating at the time her sure. giving me those constraints, but it was it was the right thing to do, and and I commend her for helping keep us on track. Awesome. So you've you've scaled and owned several companies. Uh, tell us about that. Tell us about your companies. So. Uh, I moved to Baton Rouge because mm-hmm. my parents were here and they said, there's great opportunities here. Leave New York, quit your job at Sam's Club and move to Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I did. I moved to Baton Rouge and within six months of moving down here, uh, I had already bought my first company. I bought my first house and I had gotten married. So wow. Louisiana is like the land of opportunity. Yeah. For me. <laughs> <laughs> and let me ask you, was there a little bit of culture shock coming from New York and coming down here? And I mean, there's differences in people, right? V- very much so, but in yeah. a good way. So sure. I, I loved the 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 weather was yeah. great because I'm I come from New York where it's cold and bitter. Yeah. Uh, the pace of life, I, I, the way I describe it, is people up in New York live to survive. Yeah, people down here live to live. Yeah, and that's that's a really it's good a great thing, way right? To put it. Yeah. yeah, you know where I come from up in New York, if it's five o'clock on a Friday and you leave. That's like going home early for the weekend. Like, you know, five o'clock on a Friday, you're skipping out early because, you know, life is good. Yeah. Well, of course. Hey, it's Jim Chapman reminding you that if you have not heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. One, it's free. Two, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Three, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more platforms. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's really everything you need to make a podcast in only one place. It makes it easy, folks. So do me a favor, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.com. FM to get started. Trying to find your happiness this winter? Let Fiji Airways fly you there direct. Whether you're sunbathing or snorkeling, dining or dreaming, you'll experience legendary Fijian hospitality. Expect the warmest of welcomes in this Pacific paradise. Unplug, unwind, and relax in your happy place. Fiji. Get great deals on direct flights to happiness at FijiAirways.com. That's FijiAirways.com. You deserve this. Go from here to happiness. Flying direct with Fiji Airways. First down here, a lot of people work half day on Friday or sometimes not Friday at all because they're going to go hunting or fishing or, you know, they got to spend time doing what they love. Yeah. And so I really, really admire and appreciate that. So moving down here was great for the cost of living, the pace of life, the people, the food. Uh, loved, loved moving to, to Louisiana. Yeah. yeah, the food's hard to beat. I'll tell you, it's a uh, it, good cage and food around here, everywhere you go. And we have people that uh, even with, with companies that I deal with, they'll travel here uh, for certain things, and, and they always comment on the food. When you live here, you don't realize it. It's, it this ain't like this everywhere. Exactly. You know? But they're like, man, it's bland everywhere else. You come here and we got some spice. There's no doubt about so, it. So, yeah, moving down here was the best decision I ever made. And I spoke to a lot of my friends up in New York and told them, you know, all about it. And not one of them followed me down here, though. So come on. I, I, I can't <laughs> believe it. But that's all right. They live their life and I live mine. And, sure. and mine's been great. So I have no yeah. complaints. And, you know, you went a far away away. I mean, you couldn't get no further from New York than Baton Rouge, right? It's- a- absolutely. They, they had to look it up on a map, figure out where it was. <laughs> so this um so i i told you when i i lived on the farm it was very hard and very stressful uh-huh. and you know work, needed to work smarter not harder i learned that from my dad yeah, yeah. uh so my first company when i moved down here i learned another valuable lesson because eventually i had to close it down and that was because i grew too fast and i didn't manage Grew yourself right out of I, business i did uh, i didn't manage cash flow and didn't understand what that meant and sure. uh it was it was hard yeah. Uh, having it to close it down and, and, you know, let the people go that were working with me. Yeah. Um, painful lesson. Painful lesson, but a lesson indeed, right? Uh, it, yeah, you know, absolutely. And, and, uh, and you never lose, really. You, you learn, right? Everything that I've ever done, there are no mistakes. They're just learning experiences, absolutely. Yeah. And you just move on from them and grow as a person, and as, you know, for me, as a business leader and entrepreneur. So, yeah, absolutely. 
So when you, you know, tell us a little bit about that company. What, what, uh, what did that entail? What, what did you, you know, what was so that company? And for people that have been in Baton Rouge a long time, might remember it. It was called Mattress Makers and it was a mattress factory and retail outlet store. We made our own mattresses in our own factory and then we sold them at a few stores here in Baton Rouge. William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance in Denham Springs can service all of your insurance needs. Offering auto, life, health, and commercial insurance, William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance is a proud supporter of Local Leaders, the podcast. Sure. Owned and operated. Excellent. And it was a great little business. You know, it's great to actually make something, you know, and we don't make things as much anymore. Correct. Uh, so really enjoyed that. But, but every, t- as we were selling more and more, we needed more and more inventory. Yeah. And so you're working, let's say on 25% profit margin. So you sell something for a hundred and it costs you $75 to make it. Well, if you need one, you need to invest $75 in it. But now if you, if you're selling more, you need three. Well, now you need $225. But you've only to sell three, you've only made seventy five dollars. So you just the business kept sucking more and more cash to to grow. And I just thought the more you sell, the more money you make. Yeah, it sounds pretty simple, right? (laughs) Actually, when you think about it, it really does make sense. But that cash flow and and inventory is is something to really manage. It really is. And, and, uh, you know, anybody that has a retail establishment, for example, you know, they they really need to watch their inventory and get their turns, as we call it. Uh, You know, I've been in the retail business for for close to 25 years. And and uh, inventory is inventory control is probably the biggest aspect of it. You want those turns, and you know, in my business, it's about every three months you want to, you know, if you order a case of something, you want it gone in three months Absolutely. because if you have ninety day net terms, you're selling it before you ever have to pay for it. Once you have to pay for items that are sitting collecting dust, you're in trouble. Yeah, uh, no doubt. All right, so I learned to not work as hard on the farm, and then I learned that inventory is is something to really manage. So my th- a third company uh, mm-hmm. was uh, Internet Retail Connection, my e-commerce company that I owned and operated for over 15 years. And that was the culmination of everything I'd learned up to that, that point. So yeah. first of all, it was a 100% dropship company. I didn't have any inventory. Mm-hmm. After the experience I'd gone through, I'm like, I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. So, so we drop shipped everything and I ran a really you know clean operation where I was working from home, got to spend time with my family. So again, exactly what my dad wanted for his family, but just in a different way. And then I was able to uh, grow that business and, and scale it to, to really. What type you know, of e-commerce was it? Was it a bunch, a vast array of different items like you'd see on Amazon or was it, uh, was it specific? So I had a business partner who was born and raised in new Iberia. Mm. And so he was a a hunting fishing kind of guy. Mm. And so when we were building our e-commerce business, it shows you how pure I was to business. I could care less what we were selling. I was going to just take all I learned with my retail experience growing up on the farm and Mm. selling produce and selling for Sam's club. So I knew retail and I understood running a business that I learned no inventory. So we're going to build this business and we were going to do it all online. So it was going to be clean without inventory. Absolutely. But what we were selling didn't matter. So my partner knew a lot about hunting and fishing. So we started with a camping gear website because that's, you know, kind of what he knew. And we, we had that website and it started doing really well. Now this was way back in the day. I think we started the site back in 2002. So in the early days of e-commerce yes, and it started growing. And then one of the categories in camping is pocket knives. Uh And so it was that category was doing so well. Then we made a website specifically just for pocket knives. And one of our pocket knife vendors also had some other little category called, they had these gourmet picnic baskets. And so that started to sell because we were had it on the site. And so we created a website for that. So we just kind of followed the money and followed what we're selling and just sure. sold more things. But in the end, we had 16 different e-commerce websites that we were selling product on yeah. that all funneled through to one backend system that we had custom built ourselves. Sure. Uh, nowadays, when you're in e-commerce for $29.99 a month, you can get, you know, a Shopify store or, or an Amazon store, any of these great places where you can sell. Yeah. But back in the day, that didn't exist. You either needed to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars 
with a you know big comprehensive e-commerce platform that you could buy, or you could build it our, yourself. So that's what we did. We built our own e-commerce platform where we managed the, the technology, and that was what my, my partner did. And then I managed the business and, and the customers on the retail side. Interesting. And we, and we sold a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And just to back up a little bit uh, from back when you were in college, so you have a degree. What is your degree in? Yeah, I have a degree in business management. So okay. uh, I was very fortunate that I always knew who I was and what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I, I didn't lose focus and was able to stay on that path. So from you know business on the farm to business in college to going right out in, into business. I, I was hyper focused on business, always have been and yeah. and uh, prob- always will be. So Yeah. So you're uh so and I mentioned that because it's important for people to know that you have some education behind all this and especially with what you're doing now, which we'll get into. Um, but I didn't want to gloss over that because yeah, that is important. It, it is important the, the fundamentals of business sure. and, and learning those. Of course, you know, people that go to college for business or anything, you know, you know, the academic side, you don't mm-hmm. know the real world That's right. side. That's right. So you really need both, but, but the academic side, you know, that foundation is, is very helpful. And I was, I was glad I did it. Yeah. I, I agree a hundred percent. I mean, what you learn after college is, is probably 20 times what you learn in college from the, you know, uh, uh, just a school of hard knocks side of it. But the the college is important because it'll teach you the things like accounting and all those sorts of things that you can't really learn from from just doing it. I mean, well, let me show you a a story uh, because there's two parts to college. And I think people don't really focus on the second one as much as the first one. So you go to college to learn the nuts and bolts of whatever you're learning. If you're learning accounting and finance and all those things, those are important. Sure. Uh, But there's the soft skills in life, team management. Um, being able to communicate with other people, being able to speak in front of a room, being able to manage your time and, and energy with all the activities and, and uh, studying and things you have to do that people don't really focus on those as much. And to be really successful in life, and I think in college, you really need to focus on those in addition to just staying in the library and getting a 4.0. Mm-hmm. When I, I went agree. to college, I did not have a goal of, of being a, an A student and getting a 4.0 because I knew the amount of time and energy I'd have to focus to get a 4.0 had a cost. Everything has a cost. Sure. There are decisions to be made and, and it's opportunity cost. And to get that level of grades, I needed to sacrifice time and energy for the other things, the well-rounded education and other leadership and team and group activities that I could be a part of. Gotcha. And so I, it was very important for me to, to do that. Uh, so I went to a business school and when I graduated, the Dean of the business school called me into his office. I graduated, I think, uh, and I'm not embarrassed to say, I think with a 2.9 GPA. That's so I was, I, no, it wasn't horrible, <laughs> but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, you know, yeah. He, he, my picture wasn't on the wall, you know, sure. in the hallway. Uh, but he called me in. He said, Warren, I want to thank you. You know, I've been watching your career here at school and you, you are the kind of student we're looking for. You got so much out of school with the extracurriculars, the leadership, the volunteering, the, the other things that I had done that he saw what I saw, which was there's so much more to college. And I got as much as I could out of college, the amount of the good, you know, focus on the learning and, and also the, all those other soft skills, which is why I think I was successful, you know, when I went to Sam's club, because I knew how to manage people mm-hmm. or manage a product or manage a team. And these things were really important. And that's the stuff Absolutely. that today now, nowadays people are not focused on as much. Those soft skills are so important. I agree a hundred percent, you know, and even with, with team sports, I mean, uh, you know, people that play team sports when they're in high school, for example, they develop skills that, um, that they use the, the entire rest of their life in some cases, you know, working as a team, problem solving, things like that, yeah. uh, competitiveness, sure. you know, discipline. All, all of the discipline. Yeah. Training. Uh, exactly. So it's, uh, you know, I credit my, uh, playing of team sports at that age with a lot of, of the way I am now with, with uh, discipline and things like that. So uh, absolutely very good stuff. So you. Le- Stephanie birth and the crew at SR enterprise can handle it all from sheetrock to texture to paint. Give Stephanie a call at five zero four four three two. 9284 SR Enterprise where they spread the paint and you spread the word. 
let's fast forward a little bit. You, uh, you're running this e-commerce company and eventually at some point, did you sell it or? Yeah, I, I sold it. Okay. Just like when I knew it was time to leave Sam's club and start my own business, I realized that that business, it was time for me to leave. I'd been doing it for 15 years and the, the world had been changing. I mean, technology changes so fast nowadays Absolutely. and it was so hard to keep up. And I was watching these young guys come in and just the world was just moving too fast. And I, I'm about the sweet spot. And I felt like I was just kind of now outside of the sweet spot. So it was time just to cash in my chips and start thinking about the next thing. Okay. And that's what goes back to the whole serial entrepreneur yes. thing. So, yeah. uh, so that, that's what I did. So tell, so tell us about that next thing. So you're at that point and you, you make that decision to, to, uh, you know, sell that second business. And now you're, now you're here again and you're, you're in a position where you, you're wanting to start another business. Tell me about that. So, uh, one thing that I've always done is you always try to see way into the future and mm -hmm. predict and plan things way out. So as I was thinking about selling my business and exiting, it wasn't that I did it and then I'm like, okay, let me look around and see what's what. Like, I <laughs> yeah. had already been- You, you had know, a plan. I had a plan. <laughs> right. uh, so I had been a member of a trade exchange in Baton Rouge called Partners One. Mm -hmm. And I know actually that, Jim, that you're a member of the sister trade exchange here in Denham Springs. Yep, uh, I trade exchange. I trade exchange, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it's a great business to business uh community of businesses that do business with each other and really been great. So when that business decided to expand and create these new communities like the one here in Denham Spring, I was one of the original investors. I saw how great it was for my business and I'm like, wow, this is great. And I invested in it and was a cheerleader as an investor from the side. Sure. But after quite a few years realizing it's a great business, like this really, really can, can do a lot of good in the world and, and could really scale strong. So I decided to jump in with both feet and said, I'm going to put my time and energy into help helping that business grow and scale. And that, that's, that's a project I've been working on now for a couple of years. Which is Moxie. Moxie, Moxie. exactly. And, uh, Money with the X factor, M-O-X-E-Y. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Wish I could say I thought of that. <laughs> I did not. Uh, yeah, and very familiar with uh, border exchanges and, and Moxie in particular and, uh, and iTrade Exchange and Partners One and all those sorts of things. And, you know, interesting that, uh, that they have now been recognized, right, by just, a, just had a big ceremony at the uh, – uh, at, we've been getting a lot. We've been getting a lot of momentum lately. Yeah. So um, we went to the state legislature, and the House of Representatives uh, recognized us and gave us a standing ovation for all the support and growth we're doing here in the state of Louisiana. And the Lieutenant Governor uh, Billy Nungesser gave us a proclamation, also supporting what we're doing. Fantastic. So we're real excited for the momentum, and we did a big fundraising campaign where we mm -hmm. just raised some money to help us invest in the growth of, of what we're doing. And now we're just looking for great people to help us grow Moxie in communities all around Louisiana and, and around the Southeast and eventually around the world. Absolutely. And it is a fantastic organization. Incidentally, a sponsor of this show is iTrade Exchange. Uh, and uh, and we are also a member of Moxie and iTrade Exchange in particular. Uh, so any information about that you need, you can contact Warren or myself. Yeah, or Dane you. Arnold is or the Dane. community leader yeah. here in Denham Springs, and he's been doing that since day one and done a great job. Yeah, he's a he's a character, Dane. <laughs> a lot of you out there probably know him. He's a great guy. And uh, yeah, so, so Moxie, you're at Moxie, and you're the financial director for them still to this day? Yeah, I, I do operations, okay. yeah. business and things, and... Uh, one of the things I'm excited about is, so I, I also started another business while I was um, working on Moxie, and now I'm going to kind of merge the two of those together. And that is that, that I do uh, business coaching. That business coaching. Awesome. I, I've done a lot of wonderful things and been very successful, but as I've already explained, I've made some mistakes and things have been hard. Sure. And there's and it's so clear to me that there's a system, a process, best practices tools, technology to make business a lot easier. Business hasn't, it's changed so much, but it's always the same. It's just people and processes and managing money. I mean, these things are universal. They have been, they still are. I don't care what business you're in, you deal with the same problems, the mm. same challenges, and there are ways to make things easier and make them better. And so not only did I bring those those techniques into my business, which is why I was able to be successful and sell and do really well. But now I've studied th this 
Anthem Blue Cross and Common Threads are helping schools across the country learn about healthier food preparation. And here in L.A., they're joined by the Sparks and will provide education, recipes, and knowledge to students and families about healthier options. Learn more at anthem.com slash CA slash Sparks. Anthem Blue Cross is the trade name of Blue Cross of California. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. Process even further, going back to my academic side, it's like, let me really dig into what it takes to be successful and what are those elements and those best practices. And so now I'm trying to help share that with other people and show them the way so they could have a real system and process to growing their business. They could grow without doing some of the things I did, like go crazy, go out of business, uh, create that stress that, that is not healthy. Yeah. And, and they could be, you know, have a really successful, profitable business and have more of a confidence about what's going to happen in the future, which gives you a lot of peace of mind. From humble beginnings in 1989, Big Mike's has long been a place for friends and family to gather for lunch, dinner, and drinks. Big Mike, Jocelyn, and their friendly staff invite you to come in and relax in one of their spacious dining areas or watch a game on one of the big screen TVs. Big Mike's is a place to meet old friends or make new ones. Big Mike's offers daily and nightly specials and they specialize in serving up delicious and fresh menu items. Big Mike's offers a catering menu for large groups and has private party rooms for up to 100 guests. Whether you're planning a quick lunch or a large family dinner or just a night out with friends, Big Mike welcomes you to experience a great time. And don't forget to grab some t-shirts, caps, or koozies in the gift shop. Oh, or a bottle of Big Mike's Honey Dijon. It's delicious. Big Mike Sports Bar and Grill. We're kind of a big deal. Absolutely, it does. And, you know, you say a key word there to me, and that is system. So um, I say this a lot of times to people. I'm a big Nick Saban fan, right? Uh, I know, I know. He's at Alabama. I know. But he was at LSU at He's one point. He's a great coach. He's a and great you coach. Can't, you can't, I don't know, if you love him or hate him, you can't deny his success, right? No, and he's the best coach all the time. But, you know, I heard a long time ago, and, it, man, when I tell you it resonated with me, it was something – from the time that I heard it, I brought it through my life completely. And that was Nick Saban was on an interview and he was talking about his quote unquote system. And he said, he tells all of his players, I have a system. The system works. How do we know the system works? Because we win. We win 99% of the time, you know, and, and they've been on a run forever, but wherever Nick Saban has gone, he has won, whether it's been LSU, he, he had success with Miami dolphins, left them, went to Alabama. And of course we all know what happened there. Uh, so, so all of that being said, his point was, if you buy into the system, you will be successful because the system has proven to work, right? So you trust the system. If if Nick Saban tells you to do something and you do it, he's telling you you can trust me that it's going to work. It it's it, you know it doesn't change. Success doesn't change. So it's exactly what you just said. You know, there's certain fundamentals that just don't change. They work whether it's now or 20 years ago. Uh, and and you are basically uh, there to walk people through these, teach people these or coach people these fundamentals, right? Right. So first of all, I want to make sure people understand coaching and consulting are two different things. Mm -hmm. So you think football, you think coach, and then you think if somebody's going to help you in business, oh, they're a consultant. Consultants come into your business, really learn the ins and outs of your business, and then Mm -hmm. give you advice on how you could do better. Yeah. Well, that's a consultant. That's not a coach. Mm -hmm. A coach, all they do is bring a proven system to your company 
They don't learn your company. Nobody knows your company better than you do. They just Period. help you take a proven system that works and institute it in your company so you can grow faster, smarter, get everyone in alignment, and have greater success. So you're teaching that system to the key personnel, let's say, in that company, essentially. It, it's always the, the CEO with the leadership team because mm-hmm. this, this is a team sport. Business is a team sport, just like football is a team sport. And you can't do it alone. You have to have the whole team on board. Yeah. Yeah. And where, whereas consulting would be more like, let me see everything you're doing and here's what you're doing that we don't like or whatever that you could improve on. And here's some advice on how to improve on it. Totally different than what you do. Well, first of all, nobody likes being told what to do. If you own a company, you know, and you're probably successful, you don't think that, you know, somebody can come in and know better than you. And the truth is they really can't. I'm not going in telling anyone what to do. I'm going in and helping you see the, the, the things in your business that can be improved and helping you clear out the obstacles so you can achieve them. Yeah. And it's just me guiding you through the way. It's, it's still, you know, your decision, you're running your business. I'm just helping you. I, I don't understand that all the successful people out there in, in most industries have coaches, you know, Tiger Woods is the greatest golfer that ever lived. Nobody disputes that. And through his entire career from when he was a kid to his young phenom all the way up until, you know, recently with all his stuff, but he always had a coach when you're the best golfer in the world. Why do you need a coach? Because you still need to get better. You need focus. You need accountability. You need someone to help guide you. You need someone to look over your shoulder and, and that's what coaches do. And so, um, if you're trying to do better in the world, then a coach is a great thing to have in, in, in whatever your profession is. I agree a hundred percent with that. And I want to read something I asked you that I think is important. And, uh, and so I'm going to quote it. Uh, so as I don't mess up your words, <laughs> so I asked you to provide a why statement and why statements are very important to me because, uh, uh, it really speaks to, you know, why someone is doing something that's that's really the nuts and bolts of of who they are and why they choose to do what they do so i'm going to read yours uh i i asked you your why statement what what event led you to open your business and you said for many years i have been someone that others have come to for advice about business my companies were successful and i wasn't working so hard so others wanted to learn how i was doing it and i always had time for lunch or coffee to help business owners get unstuck, quote unquote. Uh, When one of my fellow entrepreneurs lost their coach and needed someone to help run their leadership retreat, I was asked to learn the system and pitch it in a meeting. Pitch pitch in to run a meeting, rather. I loved the experience and was really good because I got high scores at the debrief. Soon after, I bought a company that was in trouble and wasn't performing well and decided to bring in this system to help that company and lead them back to health and profitability. Uh, Watching the leadership team and company grow and thrive because of this system really solidified my strong belief that every company needs a system and a coach to help them achieve all of their goals. At that time, I had sold all my own companies and decided to pursue coaching because I knew this is my way of giving back to the entrepreneurial community. That is important. Let me read that again. I knew this was my way to give back to the entrepreneurial community. Um, And I'm going to stop it right there uh, because I want to say that that is the true sign of leaders um, giving back. Uh, Took me a long time in life to learn that, but giving back uh, to to whether it's an entrepreneurial community, whether it's a 503C, whether, you know, you name it, um, that is really what leaders do. You want to be at the top. We all want to be at the top. We love that. But if you're not giving back to something, um, you need to. Uh, it is it is very important. So I wanted to kind of hammer down that point and, uh, and say that. Yeah, absolutely, Jim. And you know what's amazing is usually the more you give, the more you wind up getting. Yeah. I don't know how and why that works, but it just does. And that's, I've always found that to be true. I have as well. And uh, so kudos to you. That was not coached by me. You put that all in, uh, on yourself. And, and uh, you. so that speaks to who you are. Um, and I'll finish this out with, I researched all the top coaching companies in the world and settled on affiliating with Metronome United out of Vancouver, Canada, 
This group lamp led by Shannon Susco mm-hmm. uh, herself is a successful entre- serial entrepreneur who also found herself drawn into coaching and help other coaches grow so more companies can be impacted by using them using a proven business scaling system led by an experienced coach. So here we are. We are at Metronome United, who you eventually decided on. So you when you went into your business, you had options, right? They they have you know, several um, coaching companies. There are uh, there are quite a few out yeah. there in the United States uh, and around the world. They're all very similar because, again, the fundamentals of business are the same. They've sure. all got a little different way they go about doing things. And it was really important because, again, I could have just been a coach on my own. I, I have the experience. Mm-hmm. I've been there, done that. I've made the mistakes. I've been successful. But to have... Again, a good proven system with the tools and the process all laid out, and I didn't have to recreate all that. Uh, This company has it. They've been doing it for many years. And so Metronome United was just a a great company to work with. The the key differentiator for me was a lot of the systems focus on execution. Most companies have great ideas. It's always getting those ideas executed in a very efficient way to Mm -hmm. lead to success. Uh, And that's really important. Don't get me wrong. Sure. But- Adding in a la- layer of, of the right strategy to make sure you're working on the right things and you see the opportunities that present themselves and you're focusing on the sweet spots and, and things that you can get the best return on your investment. So when you focus on those and then you execute on them well, there's nothing that a company can't achieve and, and grow to. Yeah, and if you notice, he's using football terms right now. Execute, focus. I mean, it, it is coaching, right? It's uh you know, and, and those terms are important, especially in business. And, and so uh, what a wealth of knowledge. Uh, you must be there now. Tiffany Seacard with Home Key Mortgage combines the experience and knowledge you need to make your mortgage loan a smooth, stress-free process. Reach out to Tiffany for more information on the vast mortgage programs available in the Livingston Parish area. Tiffany Seacard of Home Key Mortgage, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Now, when you when you decided on Metronome United, so I would imagine they have you know, you go through extensive training with these folks and you get, I guess, certified through them. Yep, Is that- absolutely. It okay. takes uh, about a year to go through the whole process because you've got to show your, you know, mastery of, of the content and the tools and how to show them to people. And so they love coaches that have been there, done that. Again, this isn't an academic endeavor. This is taking the, the best processes and, 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 been, and then, They've been there, done that, and put it together. And it's a powerful combination when you bring your own experience and, and a system to go along with it. Absolutely. You're a member of, of various business uh, organizations. We already talked about Moxie and, and those sorts of people, but we mentioned earlier EO, so that Entrepreneurs Association. Is that what that is? Yeah, Entrepreneurs uh, Association or organization. I'm organization. sorry. Yeah, that, okay. was, that was a turning point for me. As an entrepreneur and as a business owner, it's really hard. There are a lot of people out there doing a lot of great things, but when you're a business owner, you're kind of your, you're in your own little group, and mm-hmm. typically all the employees look to you, and you don't really have anyone to look to. You're kind of on your own. So mm-hmm. it's very lonely being, being a CEO. It's lonely being a business owner. Sure. And EO was a place that I found that with like-minded entrepreneurs and business owners who were focused on growing themselves as leaders, growing their businesses, and the camaraderie, peer-to-peer sharing and perspective you got from being with other entrepreneurs like that was really powerful. The, the focus of EO is having what's called a forum group. And you, you've seen things like that in other word, in other terms, like a mastermind group or a CEO roundtable. Mm-hmm. It's similar to that, except we go deeper. Um, it's the five, they, they talk about the 5%. That the five percent of your life that you usually don't share because it's too too intense, you know the great things like I just closed a million dollar deal, you mm-hmm. know, or I made a million dollars this year. That's something that you're so excited about, but you don't usually share that with people other than your closest friends, maybe not even them because it's uncomfortable. Yeah, uh, but that's the kind of thing you want to share with with your fellow entrepreneurs. Sure. Or on the flip side, where you're not able to meet payroll and you're going to take a second mortgage out on your house to, you know, keep the business afloat. 
well, that's tough and, and it happens yeah. and you need other people to support you and be able to help you through some of those challenges. So EO has been a great resource for me and, and the focus of EO is the same sorts of things that we've been talking about with coaching, which is taking those solid principles and processes in business and apply them so you can work smarter, not harder. Fantastic. And I will link uh, the website for EO. Uh, to this, the description of this video in case anybody's interested in checking okay, it great. out. Hopefully a bunch of people will be. I'm also going to link the Metronome United, uh, your profile there Okay, great. Uh, as well to Thank the you. video. Make it easy for people. They don't have to, you know, rewind and all that to figure out what it is. Um, now tell me about the services that you offer with your coaching system. So, um, so let's get into that. So there's three things that, that I can offer people. One is because of all my years experience in brick and mortar retail and e-commerce, retail that uh, I've got just a good eye for for how things need to look and work and so uh, one of the things I offer is what's called a walkthrough one of the management philosophies of, of Sam's Club and Walmart was management by walking around you didn't sit in an office you mm. walked around because that's where your customers were that's where your team members were that's where your merchandise is you can't see anything from four, four walls in an office sure so we walked around so anyway I do a um, store walkthrough where we walk your store or your business, your e-commerce store, whatever it is, and we look at it from a different set of eyes, the eyes of, of an outside expert and somebody who's your customer mm-hmm. and show you things that maybe you, you've seen every day, but because you see it every day, you don't see it, and so you're blind to it. helps make things a little clearer. Yeah, that's that's huge. I mean, yeah. that's I, I, I tell people that all the time. Always look at things through your customer's eyes and what they're seeing. But it's not, e- it's easier said. Than, it is. You know, it's not. Oh, easy there's yeah. no doubt yeah. about it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a fight for some yeah. people. So the second thing that, that I offer is one-on-one CEO coaching. Uh, again, a lot of leaders know that they're running successful businesses and they're doing great things, but there's something holding them back. And they need somebody, a one-on-one coach to like someone is just there focused on helping them get to the next level, going through those obstacles and, and getting to some better practices to make life and their business better. So I would imagine you sit down with the, 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 the CEO, for example, and maybe you say, you know, what are your goals? Where are you wanting to be? Um, I mean, I'm sure there's businesses that they're, let's say their revenues at Ten million dollars are fairly successful, and that's kind of where they want to be. They don't necessarily want to scale, maybe, or maybe they've scaled all they want to scale. Uh, and then there's companies that might want to go to fifty million. And so, what you're going to do is you're going to coach them on maybe uh, ideas and in, in, in your system to get them to that fifty million dollar point. Yeah, and so that's not going to be on the CEO level, though. That's mm-hmm. only with the CEO and the leadership team. So that's the sure. core of the coaching that I do, which is to work with those teams and help them institute the practices, the system, and and really take the business to the next level. The number one goal that that I need for somebody to commit to working with a coach is this mindset of growth, that they want to grow, they're open, and and they're willing to do sometimes the extra work and focus on the things that they need to do to be successful and make things happen. Yeah. It's important that they be open to it. Right. And, and, uh, I would imagine that's one of the most important things. It, it is, but so so many people are just so caught up in the comfort of their routine and, and that's, uh, that's yeah, they don't thing. adapt. What will change? Yeah. I mean, that's human nature, right? <laughs> sure. but, but so that's the key is, is being you know willing and open. Absolutely. It's, business is hard and you have a mantra and your mantra is work, Work smarter, not harder. Right. Um, I do want to kind of ask you about that. And and so that statement to me is is uh, is you always want to work smarter, not harder. Definitely. Um, With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. (laughs) 
Chumba. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumba. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. That being said, there's nothing wrong with hard work. And so I don't want people to take away from this that uh, oh, no, you, you don't have to work hard and you can. You, <laughs> no, you do have to work really Absolutely. hard. But, but there's hard and then there's hard. And yeah. I, I'm, I want to do the former, not the latter. Yes. Yeah. Work harder with your maybe your mind and, and, and those sorts of things and not and, so and, much. On in your business to where you're ringing up product and uh, wait, you just said something that's really important, and that's mm-hmm. kind of the the core of what we teach is you have to work on your business, not in mm. your business. Right. If you show up every day to your business and all you do is put out fires and answer questions and deal with what comes your way, then you're working in your business. What, working on your business is you're looking at the future and what the trends are and what things you can do as a business to fill the needs of your customer in a greater way. You're looking at the changes in any environment with regulatory or, you know, economic changes that that's going to change the way your business is going to run. You're looking at your people and figuring out how you can give them more resources so they can work smarter, not harder themselves and be more successful, be happier do they need more education or support or what can you do to make them better? Right. And, and that's the definition of working smarter and not harder. Right. Um, and so good point there now in your, in, you know, and this is somebody, the advantage to dealing with me right now is that I'm someone that wasn't familiar with your business before we sat down and talked. Um, and so I can give you kind of my, my look on you in a way and, and uh, one thing I would imagine would be advantageous to you is networking, right? Uh, you you rely on, on uh, I would imagine it's important to get referrals and get things like that to get in front of business owners and and uh, CEOs. And, and, you know, in other words, you don't have like a brick and mortar that people go to and say, hey, I need business coaching, right? It's, it's based off of people buying into your system and then... And, uh, and, my rep- and my reputation, and your reputation. Of, of being sure. able to deliver on results and help people. And absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, networking would be great for you, uh, you know? Yeah. yeah. But luckily I've been, you know, through my network of EO and mm-hmm. through Moxie and the fact that I've been coaching for a few years now uh, mm-hmm. on the side that I built up a pretty good, you know, reputation and network of people that I work with and, absolutely. and hopefully that that'll continue. I'll build momentum and I can help more companies and help more, more CEOs grow their, their teams. So are there specific companies that you look for or that you work with, you want to work with specifically? And even if it's, um, you know, I don't know if you base that off of revenue or uh, industry or what. Okay. So first of all, the number one requirement is they have to have a growth mindset that, I mean, that's, that is a, the stop right there. If you're yeah. not willing to grow, that's it. So we already said that, but I got to harp on it because it's mm-hmm. the most important thing. And, and it's not just the CEO because the CEO sometimes wants to grow and is very focused on growth, but their team isn't. And so now you got to get the buy-in of the team. So sure. growth is very important. Uh, but th- this system really catches on fire and being able to build a process, the more successful you are, the more successful you can be. So um, any company at any level could follow these steps and, and be successful. But we're, when you try to bring in a coach and, and bring in this, the, uh, some of the technology systems that really help make it go, it starts, you know, being costly. And so you got to be able to have a good ROI on that investment. Sure. Uh, the sweet spot for a company to engage a coach like myself is a company that's doing probably uh, five to $50 million a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, industry doesn't matter because like I said, uh, the, the system works for any business. These are fundamental business practices that have no boundaries with industry or any sort of, you know, niche or category of business. Sure. Um, and then just a willing to in, invest in their growth as, as a company to, to help get to a new level. It's that's it. It's real simple. Okay. So if I have listeners in there under that $5 million mark, does that mean don't reach out or does that mean reach out and get some information? No, reach Let's out and see. get information. Okay. Uh, probably maybe won't engage a coach at the level that, that I'm, offering my services, Mm -hmm. but there's so many free resources out there that I'd be happy to point them in the direction of, uh, metronome United actually has two books that are out there. So for, you know, 15 bucks, you buy the book, it tells you all the things that, that, that I'm teaching. Yeah. So the information's out there. 
Uh, it, the coach helps you implement it and make it go faster, but you, you have the information and could do this all by yourself. So level one is you read the information and do it yourself. Level two is you read the information and, and then maybe you go to, uh, we sometimes have these boot camps where you can attend. So kind of, kind of getting immersed into some of these uh, concepts and tools and understand them. Mm -hmm. And then of course the third level, the highest level is actually engaging a coach like myself to help you, you know, take your business from here to there. And it, it, it's a process too. When the engagements obviously, you know, aren't, aren't short term the, from start to finish and say finish, there's no ever finishing, right? Your business is never done, right? but it's about three years before you really get all of the systems in place and really get rolling and start to really compound themselves. So that's a real commitment of, of time and energy and, and money. So it's something that, uh, but of course, if your business uh, could, you know, double, triple in business, that that's, that's significant and you could really, you know, get that, uh, yeah. the ROI of those invested dollars worth it. I would say so. Black Sheep Creative understands the importance of digital marketing and your return on your investment. It's their aim to provide professional web and graphic design services at a price point that smaller businesses and startups can afford. Get in touch with them on the web at blacksheepcreative.com. And yeah, so, uh, so folks, that's some good information for those out there that, I mean, maybe their business is just starting and they're not to that level yet that they need to be, uh, maybe to get a coach, yep. but there's books. There right? are books. All right. And so, and I don't know if you're ready to get into this now, but I brought a little cheat sheet of some mm -hmm. things that I want to share that's yep. going to help people. That's right actually, now. that is a, it's a seven point discussion and, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to give you a little, uh, it's almost like a little sneak peek maybe into some of the things that, uh, Warren can do for your business. And so let's, let's talk about that. You picked the perfect time. That was All my right. next thing. So you, you mentioned Nick Saban, successful coach and mm -hmm. successful program. Um, I, when I moved to Louisiana, one of the things I learned was football is big down here. And so I became a real fan of football, SEC football. My son goes to LSU, so I'm a big LSU fan. And I realized so many similarities between successful football programs and successful companies. Yes. So all the systems that I use as a coach, I kind of came up with uh, an analogy to football. And so I wanted to share that with, with everyone today and uh, so give you a glimpse of to some of the things that you could be thinking about. And if you come away with nothing from this conversation other than this is a, a, a catalyst to make you think about your business in a different way and try to think about how you could put some of these things into your business to be more successful, this in itself is, is a great start. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to run through these seven. Yep. Uh, there are seven things that really make football and running a business the same and successful. So here we go. I'm, I'm ready. I'm going to rapid fire. If you, stop I'm me if ready. I'm going too fast. No, go. All right, first one communication football teams that win games communicate uh, when you think about it and again these are the things you don't think about mm -hmm. so in a football game before every play what is the first thing they do huddle up they huddle up what is a huddle it's their 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 leader is saying hey here's what we're getting ready to do and everyone then knows their place to make it happen they make a plan they tell everyone the plan before they do the plan that's awesome yes do you do that in your business before you're getting ready to do something? Do you have a huddle and discuss what it is that's going on? Right. Uh, there's my first question. First thing to think about uh, one, all the companies that I coach have a daily huddle. You cannot have a successful company and have a good communication and good focus and good plan unless you're discussing what's going on. So you got to have a huddle. Successful football teams have a huddle. Companies need to have a huddle too. Second part of communication uh, how about halftime? What happens at halftime? At halftime, band plays. The, well, at, yeah. Well, while the band's playing, what's the team doing? Yeah, they're they're in they're, they're covering that first half. They're they're in the locker room yeah. analyzing what they were doing, what worked, what didn't work, and what adjustments they need to make for the second half so they can win the game. Yes. Well, do you do that in your company? That would be the next step and thing to think about. You've got to have com good communication, analyze the play, analyze what's working, not work, not working, meetings and communication. So I, I teach in, in the books, uh, there's this whole setup of a proper communication rhythm from daily huddles, weekly team meetings, 
uh, monthly leadership meetings, quarterly and annual planning sessions, all these things leading to get everyone aligned as a team, communicating, understanding, and therefore you know what everyone's doing and you're working towards the plan. Excellent. So that's number one. That's a lot already, huh? That's a lot already. All right. So number two. <laughs> but good. <laughs> uh, statistics. Yeah. Uh, every team, ha- I mean, baseball, football, that statistics, there's all these numbers. What's, you know, what has this person done? What the team has done? The this and the that. There's so many numbers that they're following. They're using those numbers to make sure that the players are executing their positions and the team is therefore doing what they need to do. Sure. Well, Companies need to do the same thing. What measurements are you using against your team members? Does every team member have a number that they're responsible for or some metric or something that they can be held accountable to? And every day they know what to do. And every day if you look at them in the eye and say, hey, Jim, how did you do today? They they can actually say, oh, I'm winning because I have done X of the X or whatever that number or something that they're held accountable to. So statistics are so important in in any sport and they're they're as important in business just we don't focus on them enough so you need to give more metrics for people to work on agreed all right that's number two all right number three uh one of the famous visuals i have about football is you got the coach standing above the team and they've got that whiteboard or that blackboard and they've Mm -hmm. got the o's and the x's and they're drawing the lines what are they doing they're showing the play well they're showing it in a visual way. They've created a picture to explain the play, the plan, the strategy of what they're going to do. Um, human beings are very visual creatures. We see a picture and we understand what it says. They say, you know, picture says a thousand words. Sure. So imagine if you were a leader of a company and instead of explaining what we're trying to do, you showed them through a picture what they're trying to do. So one of the things that I I teach in in coaching is creating these strategic pictures of certain parts of your business so you can see your business in a visual way. Uh, So an example of that is uh, one of the foundational things we teach is called a KFFM, Key Function Flow Map. And it's a way to actually look at the four or five important functions that make your business run, that actually put money in the bank. And then you look at each one and you figure out, Who's responsible for it? And what are the numbers to make it go? So, for example, if you were selling cars and every 10 people that showed up on your lot to buy a car bought a car, uh, you know, one out of 10. Mm -hmm. So, you know, first thing would be, you know, marketing to get people on the lot. Well, the more people on the lot, you need 10 people to get one car sold. So you just be following the functions and it's kind of a very visual way to see, oh, wait, the second step is closing sales and we don't have a good closing rate we're supposed to be at 10 percent. now we're closing at five percent there's a red flag problem so visualizing that that so blackboard visualizing your strategy visualizing what's happening that's the other thing that businesses need to focus more time on all right all right number four so we talk about the plays and being able to execute the plays but how do you know the plays teams have a play book um you know, that's like the Bible of the team. You really need to know the playbook. Every player needs to know the plays because when it's time to be on the field, you got to know what you're supposed to do. Sure. So every team needs a playbook. Every company needs a playbook. You need everyone to understand where you are and where you're going and what things they need to do. And that goes back to how do they know that? Well, once you come up with the plan, you communicate it that to them with the meeting rhythm, with the strategic pictures, and it all starts to come together. Sure. Now all of a sudden, it's not just you show up every day and the CEO, you're, the owner knows what to do and you're just following his lead. What he sees, you see, and now you know your place in the bigger picture and it really starts help, helping everything come together. Gotcha. So playbook. Uh, next one is one of my favorites, using the rules. So again, football, there are one of the statistics that they always talk about in football is penalties and yards gained or lost in penalties. You could win or lose a game. In fact, I think there are statistics that show that, that that's a huge defining factor in winning or losing a game is penalties. Yes. What is a penalty? It means that you broke a rule. There's a rule and you didn't follow it. Well, in business, what are the rules you need to follow that make or break a company? No. Yeah. What are they? So uh, I define them as the core values, the, the rules of how the company operates. 
So let me give you a quick example that helped clarify the picture of this. So lots of great chicken places out there in the world. Um, one of my favorites is Chick-fil-A. And if you've been to Chick-fil-A and then next week you go to, um, let's see, you go to Popeye's Chicken. They both make great chicken. But boy, there is a difference in how Chick-fil-A operates and how Popeye's Chicken operates. Everything from the way they run the drive through the person at the counter, uh, the, the way the bathroom looks. And, and all that comes down to is they have a core, they have core values. It's their culture. It's how they empower their people to run the business. And so a company needs to be really strong in, in those values and communicate them. And everyone who works there needs to know what they are. And then when they know what they are, everyone needs to follow them. Because if everyone's following those guiding principles, then you have a company that's successful because people are not breaking the rules. Yeah. If there are no rules or people don't know what they are, then they're going to break them and then things aren't going to work. So sure. follow the rules. Yep. All right. Next one, <laughs> recruiting. In fact, that's one of the ones that most teams don't think about too much. Mm -hmm. You can't win a football game without having great players on the team. And so when the end of the season happens, you, you know, you're like, oh, can't wait till next year. You think the coach is sitting around just taking a vacation and waiting for the next season to start? No, he's hitting the road recruiting to try to get the best players to play on his team for the next year. Companies need to be recruiting for A players. You want the best players working on your team. And how do you get them? You need to be recruiting them. You need to create a great company that people want to work for. And so recruiting is hugely important. And I don't think enough companies put enough time and energy into recruiting. I agree with that. Yeah. All right. And then that leads me to number seven, the last one, the most important one. You can't win a game unless you know the score. When you look at the scoreboard, you know at any moment in time during the game if you're winning or losing. In fact, that's what kind of makes it fun and exciting. Mm -hmm. Have you ever played for funsies with somebody when you're playing tennis or you're playing flag football or playing cards or whatever, playing for fun is okay. But when there's a score and you're keeping track of who's winning or losing, that's what, that when the magic happens, you just something about wanting to win. So how does a company know if it's winning? If you don't have a scoreboard, every company needs to create a scoreboard. And I'm talking a big scoreboard that's out front and center in the lobby or in the break room or wherever it is that people congregate, and that scoreboard is telling a story. Are we winning or are we losing? Now, what does that scoreboard need to represent? Well, each company could decide that on their own, what that number needs to be for them. But if their goal is, let's say, to close 100 deals this month, and they put a big 100 on the wall, and every time they sell one, they you know, it comes down, it goes 99, 98, 97. Whatever they're measuring, if everyone on the team knows the score and if they're winning or losing, it's powerful. Yeah. So if... Companies focus on just these seven things. Um, their companies dramatically change. And so it's really important to, to focus on these. And these are the principles that, that I teach in my coaching practice. Agreed, 100%. And you know, off the top of my head, a couple of businesses I can think of that will benefit from that just right off the bat, car dealerships, right? So um, All-Star Automotive, people like that, those would be great Uh, uh people to do business with Warren as far as your business is concerned. Auto dealerships pop out for some reason to me. Also builders, large builders uh, have large teams that uh, could also benefit from some of, some of what you're saying here. And those are two just off the top. Yeah. The, what I tell people is if your company is growing and doing great, but you're pulling your hair out because every day you show up and what you if you don't have hair and <laughs> I'm so sorry, Jim. I didn't mean to. I pulled it all you. out. <laughs> if you're if you're running a growing company, but you're every day you show, get up in the morning, you go to work, and you're afraid because you don't know what's going to happen next. Like you just just this chaos in your success. Then you need a program. You need a process. You need a coach. Yes. On the flip side, if you've been working so hard and this year kind of looked the same as last year, which looked the same as the year before, and you're not getting ahead, and you want to get ahead then you need a, a different system. You need a coach. You need to help move things in the right direction. I agree 100%. And I want to thank you for coming on today. We've been going, believe it or not, an hour and five minutes already. Here well, time on the flies when you're having podcast. fun. It? Yeah, I mean, it seems like 20 minutes, but uh, but we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. And, uh, and I do want everyone to go out. Let's show our support for Warren and his business, uh, Warren Sager. 
What's the last part? Warren Sager coaching. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know where you, I didn't know where you were going with That's that. Right. I apologize. I was just going to let you finish. I missed my cue. Uh, Warren Sager Coaching, uh, thanks so much for coming on today. If business owners want more information, let's shout out your website real quick for those people. Yeah, it's warrensager.com. And you have a Facebook page yet or not? I do. Okay, what is that? Warren Sager Coaching. Easy, easy. Uh, I I'll, got it now. See, I'm, yeah, I'm on to you. <laughs> you're on to me now. So I'll be linking all of that also to this video uh, if you're watching the video version. And uh, you can just click on that link. It'll bring you. We're going to have all kinds of links on there that we talked about today. Uh, I do want to thank everyone out there for viewing and listening to the Local Leaders, the podcast. Please continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share Local Leaders to all our social social media platforms as we shine to spot you strive to shine a spotlight on all our local businesses i need to mention lopa warren that is the louisiana organ procurement agency local leaders the podcast has partnered with real life real crime a podcast by woody everton as well as captain duvall of duvall's cajun charters to offer a fishing trip for two with woody everton this inshore trip will come complete with a booked room at in Delacro, Louisiana, a fishing charter the next morning with Duvall's Cage Charters, and you'll be fishing with Woody Everton as well as a 125-quart Yeti ice chest courtesy of Local Leaders, the podcast. Folks, this package is valued at several thousand dollars, and what we're doing is raffling off tickets. We're going to draw the winner live at Crew Bash 2 in June. You don't have to be present to win, and all the proceeds worn are going to go to Lopa. So this is a great nonprofit. profit uh, uh, and they, they hand an organ donation. Yep, so, I'm an organ uh, donor. Love Lopa. There you go. So uh, check that out. And I'm going to uh, I'm gonna also have that link to this video where you can click that. Purchase raffle tickets. It's $15 each or $100 for a book of 10 tickets. So check that out. Uh, I do want to thank all my sponsors, including Premier Credit Corporation, Trisha Johnston Realtor, Big Mike Sports Bar and Grill, Sporting Center, Black Sheep Creative, SR Enterprise Painting, and William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance. We could not do any of this without all of you. Until next time, I am Jim Chapman reminding you to love your community, support local business, and keep leading. Thank you very much. Dane Arnold with iTrade Exchange has been enabling small business in the Livingston Parish area to save cash through his network of over 300 participating Livingston Parish businesses. Saving cash by trading services with other exchange members is what iTrade Exchange is all about. For more information, contact Dane Arnold at 225-205-3640. Or visit itradeexchange.biz. Sporting Center in Denham Springs is your one stop shop for team sports equipment, school uniforms, and promotional goods. Conveniently located next to the Antique Village since 1977. Sporting Center, your business means everything to them because your name rides on everything they do. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.